When this sewage worker was assigned to tackle a sewer clog, he anticipated a typical day on the job. Sewage clogs were a frequent issue, and he was adept at clearing them. However, this time, as he drained the water and caught sight of the obstruction, his face turned pale with shock. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he had no choice but to call the police. Stewart was employed by one of the largest sewer draining companies in the area, which usually dealt with straightforward issues affecting just a few households. However, reports had come in about entire city blocks experiencing block drains, prompting an urgent check of the underground systems. Despite his experience, Stewart could never have anticipated what he was about to find. His employer had sent Stewart alone into the sewers to investigate the root cause of the widespread issue. The company's teams typically ventured into the city's underground pipe systems about once a month, so Stewart was familiar with the layout. Equipped with essential gear and a robust flashlight, he began his inspection. Initially, everything appeared normal, and there was some water access, but nothing alarming enough to concern the residents above. As Stewart ventured deeper, the extent of the blockage became apparent. Water and other fluids had accumulated to levels higher than he had ever encountered. What the hell, he muttered, realizing the seriousness of the situation, he rushed back to his truck and grabbed the extraction hose to drain the accumulating water, unaware that this action would soon unveil a shocking secret. As the water level gradually decreased, the cause of the blockage began to reveal itself, a sizable, greenish object was clogging one of the main tubes, Stuart stared in disbelief. Trying to lower the water level as quickly as possible, the object appeared to be made of plastic, similar to materials used for inflatable pools. What is that thing? Stuart wondered aloud, puzzled by the familiar yet out-of-place item. The object was wedged tightly, blocking any water flow. This didn't get here by accident, Stuart concluded, suspecting that someone had intentionally placed a large, balloon-like object in the sewer, despite his initial confusion. He couldn't fathom why anyone would do such a thing. After about 30 more minutes, the water had fully drained, and the truth dawned on Stuart. A light bulb went off in his mind. Of course, I know what this is, he exclaimed, almost excited. It was an inflatable expansion device commonly used for pipe repairs. The realization of what he was dealing with and its implications made him understand the severity of the situation, prompting the necessary call to the authorities. In the depths of the town's sewage system, a significant issue arose when broken parts of sewage pipes put the tunnel walls at risk of collapse, essential repairs were needed, and the solution seemed to lie in a particular type of pressure inflation device that could stabilize the walls. However, there was a major hurdle. These devices were exclusively owned by Stewart's company and were all idly sitting in their warehouse, as none were currently deployed, perplexed. The sewage worker Stewart immediately checked the company's system database. He also investigated the stock levels of competing firms. To his alarm, not a single inflation device was in use anywhere in the town. Furthermore, according to the database, no repair plans had been scheduled anywhere. The situation didn't make sense, and the more Stewart dwelled on it, the more his suspicion grew. He hypothesized that perhaps these expansion units weren't just for supporting broken pipes. Could they be used to block water or even prevent unauthorized access? With this troubling thought, Stewart's anxiety intensified. He felt increasingly uneasy about being alone in the underground tunnels. Deciding he needed support, he called the police. The phone operator, intrigued and taken aback by Stewart's urge at request, quickly dispatched the three nearest officers to his location. Relieved that the police were taking the situation seriously, Stewart met officers Stevens, Waddle and Santiago at his truck. Without wasting a moment, he led them back to the site, explaining the peculiar circumstances along the way. The officers were equally baffled upon seeing the cause of the blockage. As the investigation commenced, it became apparent that the device had been deliberately placed. Officer Tricia Stevens took charge, asking Stewart if it was feasible to remove the blockage given his expertise, despite the unknowns about who placed the device or why. Everyone agreed it needed to be removed but cautiously, due to the potential for a large volume of water being held back. Together, Stewart and the officers meticulously worked to loosen the device. Progress was slow, but eventually, they created a small gap. Before proceeding further, Stewart used a tool to measure the water pressure behind the blockage. The readings were unexpected, prompting a concerned inquiry from Officer Tricia. The complexity of the situation was clear. 
and they prepared to delve deeper into the mystery, aware that the implications could be significant, Stewart observed that the water pressure on the other side of the blockage was unusually low, which was contrary to what one would expect in such scenarios, there must be more blockages further down, he speculated, his voice heavy with disbelief, the revelation took everyone by surprise, and the group paused in a heavy silence, absorbing the implications, breaking the silence. Officer Waddle proposed a theory, the only logical reason someone would install multiple blockages is if they intended to drain a specific area of the sewers, he suggested, the team exchanged glances, a sense of gravity settling among them as they realized they might have uncovered a significant issue, we need to figure out what's happening and who's behind this, Trisha declared with resolve, rallying the other officers who all nodded in agreement, she then turned to Stewart. Seeking his expertise, can you help guide us? Without a moment's hesitation, Stewart agreed, eager to uncover the mystery himself, the team quickly dismantled the inflatable blockade and pressed deeper into the sewer system, as expected, they encountered yet another blockade, Stewart checked the water pressure behind this new obstacle and found it alarmingly low, to expedite their mission, Trisha, under Stewart's guidance, deflated the blockade, as they ventured further. They noticed that although there were multiple blockades, they were strategically placed at junctions, blocking one way but leaving another open, the team decided it was best to follow the open routes. Stewart noted that the pipes in these routes were increasingly cleaner and drier, indicating that the blockades might have been in place for some time and they were indeed getting closer to their target, just as Stewart was about to share his observations with the team. A sudden, eerie noise halted everyone in their tracks, the sound echoed through the pipes, making it difficult to pinpoint its origin, and filled the group with a sense of foreboding, Stewart's anxiety was palpable, and the officers struggled to locate the source of the noise, seeing the tension, Trisha attempted to call for backup using her walkie-talkie, only to find there was no signal this deep in the sewers, looks like we're on our own, she stated. A statement that did little to comfort the uneasy sewer worker, however, Stewart, remembering the layout of the sewer, mentioned a nearby manhole that could potentially offer a signal, Trisha signaled him to lead the way, but as they moved forward, the ominous sounds seemed only to grow louder, we're almost there, Stewart reassured the team, though his voice carried an edge of uncertainty about what awaited them in the depths of the sewer system, with a slight tremble in his voice. Stewart felt the eerie noise growing more unsettling, causing his nerves to fray, he was beginning to regret his decision to guide the officers through this labyrinth and underground, as they rounded a corner, the group abruptly halted, their eyes widening at the astonishing sight before them, what is this, Stuart mumbled under his breath, the narrow sewer pipe had opened into a vast and spacious chamber, much larger than he had remembered, Stuart was familiar with this room. It was necessary to cross it to reach the manhole they were targeting, however, what truly surprised him wasn't the chamber itself, but its contents, the room, previously empty on his last visit, was now filled with rows of high-end, sophisticated technology, this wasn't here before, whispered Stewart, stating the obvious, hesitant yet curious, the group carefully entered the chamber, their eyes scanned the space, taking in the sight of electrical wires that had been tampered with. Now rerouted and connected to various devices, it was clear that someone had been harnessing power from the buildings above ground, Officer Santiago, barely concealing his astonishment, whispered, what is this place? The chamber was cluttered with monitors displaying live city camera footage and several listening devices, this is where those sounds are coming from, Stewart pointed out, gesturing towards a tower of monitors, it's some sort of observation post, Trisha added in disbelief. Joining Stewart, the discovery stunned the group, they all knew the area was restricted for a reason, but none had anticipated discovering a clandestine surveillance hub, who had set this up, and why, pondered the officers, who immediately began searching for clues, someone wouldn't go to these lengths without some sinister intentions, we need to figure out who is behind this and what their plans are before they have a chance to act, Trisha stated decisively. Dividing the room into sections for a thorough search, Stuart listened obediently and hurried to uncover clues, eager to leave the eerie chamber, suddenly, Officer Waddle exclaimed from a desk piled with documents, drawing everyone's attention, as the group gathered around, they momentarily glanced at a small monitor displaying city footage but quickly focused on the documents strewn about, no way, Trisha mumbled as she quickly scanned the files, with each page she turned. Her eyes widened in shock, it all makes sense now, she whispered, her voice soaked with disbelief, 
However, regaining her composure, she resumed her role as leader, this is an incredible discovery, we need to call for backup immediately, she declared, reaching for her portable phone, thankfully, due to the extensive wiring in the area, she had a signal, but before she could send the message, the sound of approaching footsteps halted their actions. If the intruders noticed the group's presence, they would surely flee, quickly, Stuart and Trisha ducked behind a large console to hide hoping to avoid detection and preserve the chance to unravel this mystery. One evening, under the shadow of towering monitor screens, Stuart and a nearby officer held their breath in anticipation. They had just witnessed the officer discreetly signal three times with her radio before turning it off. At that moment, a group of seven individuals entered the chamber from the opposite side. Unaware of Stuart and the officer's presence, the intruders passed perilously close to where Stuart and his colleague Trisha were concealed behind a stack of monitors. As the group settled into the chamber, one of them broke the silence. Is the path ready? His voice echoed slightly off the cold, hard walls of the chamber. It should be. But I'll perform one final check. Another replied with a tone of authority. Stuart sensed Trisha tense beside him. They both realized the gravity of the situation. Two blockades had been removed earlier, and it was only a matter of time before the group discovered this, potentially leading to a disastrous confrontation. They were in a precarious position, unable to communicate with other officers without alerting the group, which might not even be complete yet. Stewart's mind raced for solutions, but he was distracted by the group's ongoing conversation. They were discussing potential targets, mentioning various jewelry stores and banks. As the reality of their intentions sank in, Stuart felt a surge of adrenaline. These were not just ordinary trespassers, they were planning significant criminal activities. Panic began to set in, and sweat beaded on his forehead. Trisha signaled him to remain quiet. I'll handle this, trust me. She whispered with a calm assurance that belied the tension of the moment. The group carried on their discussion. Outlining their next moves, suddenly, a new voice chimed in, announcing, we need to wait for Roger to return before finalizing anything, this was the break Trisha was waiting for, as they shifted their conversation to mundane topics, a man they presumed was Roger rushed in, his face etched with panic, there's a problem, one blockade has been destroyed, and another moved, he reported. This revelation caused immediate unrest among the group, who stood up to confront Roger for more details. Seizing the moment, Trisha sprang from her hiding spot, her voice cutting through the tension. Now, she commanded, following her lead, other officers emerged from their concealed positions. Together, they advanced towards the criminals, who were now clustered around Roger, demanding they remain calm and surrender. Stuart watched in awe as the scene unfolded, his heart pounding with the intensity of the moment. The calculated risk taken by Trisha had paid off allowing them to catch the criminals off guard and prevent what could have been a series of heinous crimes. She was very nervous. The criminals outnumbered the officers by double, yet the latter were well equipped and held the advantage of surprise. As the situation unfolded, the criminals quickly realized that surrendering was their best course of action, all except for one. The man known as Roger was already on edge. He noticed that the blockades had been tampered with and reacted swiftly when the officers made their move, in a desperate attempt to escape, he darted into a nearby pipe, which Stuart knew led to the sewer system's exit. Stuart, alongside Officer Trisha, pursued Roger through the dank and echoing underground, guiding Trisha with his knowledge of the sewer layout. They reached what they thought was the exit, only to find it barricaded by a police unit already in the process of arresting Roger. The setup was part of a larger trap designed by the police. When Trisha called for backup, it ensured that every member of the criminal gang was apprehended. The arrests quickly became national news, not just for the capture but also as the investigation unfolded, revealing the extent of the criminals' plans. The media closely followed the subsequent trial. The group had schemed to rob multiple jewelry stores and banks simultaneously across the city by exploiting the sewer system. They had crafted a clear path through the sewage system by blocking off certain pipes with inflatable devices stolen from a sewage company. This would have allowed them to move swiftly and unseen beneath the city while executing their heists. Fortunately, the meticulous planning of Stuart and the responding police officers, who were first to the scene, thwarted these grand larcenous ambitions. Their teamwork and sharp instincts played pivotal roles in averting what could have been a series of catastrophic crimes. In recognition of their bravery and quick thinking, the mayor's office awarded them the Medal of Honor, cementing their achievement and ensuring the safety of the city.
Do you have any thoughts after hearing the above story? Tell us in the comments section. We'd like to hear your thoughts. That's for today's story. Please subscribe and give a thumb up. See you next time.